Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. I'm Heath and we've got two months of imprint to talk about. This is the August and September 2022 arrivals from imprints. Now August is missing uh, three titles that were delayed. So they're not included. We'll cover those in future imprint spotlights. Uh, but both of these months arrived within about two days of each other. Uh, so we'll just tackle it all in one video. I've also got some new arrivals here from ViaVision, which is the parent company of imprints, the company that releases imprints. Uh, so if you're a fan of the Beatles, music, country music, uh, and horror, stick around to the end of the video because there's some stuff that we'll save for the end. All right, let's just jump right into it. So much ground to cover. And uh, we'll kick it off with On the Beach. This is a two-disc um, really nice collector's box for On the Beach. 1959 film, sort of a maybe the ultimate Cold War movie. If you knew the end was coming and that you were hours away from total atomic nuclear annihilation, how would you spend your last moments? That's kind of what On the Beach is about. And it's got a great cast. Gregory Peck, Fred Astaire, Ava Gardner, Anthony Perkins before Psycho. But the real draw to this, here I'll flip this around. As always, when we have so much to talk about, I'll let you do the bulk of the reading. I'm not going to go through all this one by one, nor am I going to review the movies here. Uh, reviews will show up at SerialAtMidnight.com. This is to let you know that it's out. And it's going fast. Some of the stuff is already sold out. I think this might actually already be sold out. Uh, but you might be able to find it at a, at a retailer somewhere. So don't not look. You know, Keep looking for it if you want it. But uh, there's tons of stuff here. Multiple commentaries, archive footage. The real uh, draw here, by the way, this is removable. And that's a little piece of glue. But under the glue is that nice shot of, uh, of Gregory Peck and Ava Gardner. Uh, the real draw here, I think, is the, the uh, film about, uh, it's called Fallout. This is a documentary film about, see, follows the first film on the work of British novelist Neville Shute, famous for his international bestsellers, A Town Like Alice and On the Beach. So uh, the man that wrote the story that was adapted for the movie, uh, it's a documentary about, about the author. And it also comes with this gorgeous, Imprint has just started just to include booklets. I'm within, well, not even booklets, books. Within the last three to six months, uh, they've really started to, to lean into books. And I love it. You know I love a booklet because this has not just, um, it's a lot of photos and the pre there's not really much text here. But it's a lot of behind the scenes photos. I don't know, I just love stuff like this. I love printed but I say this like every time we talk about a booklet, but every booklet or every, every video is somebody's first video here. So I, I can't say it enough. Uh, I love printed material so that I can explore, you know, at my own pace away from my television, get into the marketing here. There's one of these I wanted to show you specifically. Here it is. Boom. So that's what we're talking about with on the beach. Um, a really... Kind of heartbreaking, sad movie about the, it's the times we still live in. Uh, all right, moving on to the next. Uh, this is numbers 148 through 151. This is the Film Noir Collection uh, 3. You can't see the Film Noir Collections over there. Uh, they're on the top shelf. There's another shelf up there. So one volumes 1 and 2 are on the shelf above me. Uh, these include, well, here, let me flip this around. You can read that freeze that if you want to read it you can get all the info i love the presentation on these i love the hard boxes i love the individual cases so we've got the strange love of uh martha ivers which is uh stanwick and uh, van heflin elizabeth scott two two femme fatales two noir femme fatales in this movie um, no man of her own which is barbara stanwick by the way the special features are on this outer box but let me flip them around and show them to you anyway I want to give you, that's my job here, is to give you the best look to inform you of what's here. So, uh, Alan K. Rohde is all over this. Alan K. Rohde is, um, introduction with Kirk Douglas and Alan K. Rohde. Alan K. Rohde is a scholar's scholar. Uh, when some people just talk about a movie in a commentary or something like that, he's going into the archives and going through the files and pulling out, like, contracts and all kinds of stuff. Memos about auditions and things like that. He's it's so impressive. Uh, no Man of Her Own has um, some new features as well. The Turning Point. 
Alan K. Rohde's on this one as well. And last but certainly not least is The Desperate Hours, a bogey movie, hum Humphrey Bogart, that was remade with um, with uh, M Mickey Rourke, who we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, and that just got released from... An who, did who released that? It was on a double feature with another Mickey Rourke movie. Um, but as far as I know... See, here's the thing. These are for the Australian market. And I should have said at the beginning of this video that everything in this episode uh, plays perfectly fine on my Region A locked player. Imprint does not lock their releases. And most of the Viavision stuff isn't locked either. And everything we're going to talk about there also play perfectly fine on my Region A locked player. Just because something is marked Region B on Amazon somewhere does not mean that it doesn't play. They're obligated by certain contract negotiations and rights agreements to lock, to, to, to say that it's for a certain region. Um, so people who are outside of Australia, you're going to know, I think two of these are on, uh, they're in print from other studios, but two of these are not. Uh, Desperate Hours and No Man of Her Own. I do not believe have other pressings. But the main point here is that these are for the Australian audience and anybody who else who wants to play can. Uh, and I think that that's really cool because the target market here is Australia. But because they're not locked, anybody that loves these can pick these up. We have options. That's the point is that consumers, buyers, collectors, we have options. So here's what's under the, um, the sheet here. All right, we got uh, the uh, the Scarlet Hour. This is uh, wonderful stuff here. The, what is uh, Alan K. Rohde? I'm telling you guys, this man is a he is one of the uh, top tier noir and just classic cinema uh, preservationists. I would say. Um, here, flip that around. And with these, I know it's it's important to see the inner artwork as well. Sometimes people ask me, so these are marketed as, as you know, limited editions, uh, and I think these are all limited to 1,500 copies. People ask me, do they get repressed? Um, a few of them have in non-limited editions, but it's never a sure thing. It really just depends on how popular a title is, how much of a demand there is, if it's going to come back in print. So if you're on the fence, just because something is a limited edition doesn't mean that there's a standard edition coming. They really just take it on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm super excited about this one. This is Secret of the Incas. This is a Charlton Heston movie from 1954. Uh, and it is probably the movie that is the most single-handedly responsible for the creation of Indiana Jones. The biggest influence on Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Indiana Jones character. Now, there's a lot of ingredients in that stew. There's Alan Ladd movies like China. There's uh, all the serials you know that, that uh, Lucas and uh, Spielberg grew up with. But this is a huge one, uh, huge stuff. So there's even a feature here about this. So we got an audio commentary by Philippa Berry and Raiders of the Incas interview with film historian and writer Chris Pogiali on the influence on Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now there's another Charlton Heston movie that's also been released from imprint that was a little bit later uh, and deals with ants. And you see that influence pop up in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. There's a whole subplot with like ants and stuff. Like it's straight, they just lift this stuff straight out of these movies. So uh, it's fun to be able to go back and see the roots of the stuff that I don't know, I grew up on. I hope you probably grew up on it too. Um, Lux Radio Theater, Secret of the Ink is the radio version with Charlton Heston, Nicole Mari. Here's the inner artwork, the Blu-ray case itself. I could, I, sh I, they all have inner artwork as well, but I'm trying my best to keep the running time on this video lean so that more people discover this stuff. Uh, the world of Susie Wong. This is a big deal too. This is another collector's edition, two disc collector's edition. Uh, Susie Wong is the movie that uh, really put Nancy Kwan on the map and this here, I'll flip this around. William Holden is great in this movie. Uh, and it has a whole second disc here in this limited collector's edition about um, Hollywood Chinese from 2008. Brings together a captivating portrait of filmmakers and iconic images for a high spirit to look at how the Chinese have been imagined in movies from silent classics to contemporary blockbusters. I think we're all thinking of like Fu Manchu and Charlie Chan. Uh, so here's the world of Susie Wong. And here is Hollywood Chinese. Then we're just going to keep on going. 
Dursu Uzawa. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm never sure with some of these things. Uh, this is a Kurosawa film that honestly I've never seen, so I'll be discovering this one for the first time. And I've heard a lot of praise for this movie. I've got, it's Kurosawa, right? Like, there's no such thing as, you know, I mean, he's a, he's one of the masters. So, uh, but I'm really excited about discovering this. It's got uh, a ton of stuff here. What year is this? 1975. I think maybe that's why. It's like I, I'm familiar with you know the earlier Kurosawa stuff. But I've heard so much praise for this movie. I'm really excited about checking it out. Asian cinema outside of martial arts cinema, and even martial arts cinema to a certain extent, has been very hard for um, some of our, you know, some of the Western audience to see and to find. So uh, I don't know. I'm just really excited about it. I'm also excited about this one. This is Barfly, the new two disc collector's edition. Um, this is ambitious, you guys. This is, it, this might be the most. How do I want to say this? This might be the most appealing for uh, cinephiles out of this whole wave because we have Barfly, the Mickey Rourke Faye Dunaway movie itself. Well, here, did I flip this over? Did I show you guys what's included in the back? There is a four-hour documentary on another disc about Charles Bukowski, the, the writer. and So the Charles Bukowski tapes. When Barbette Schroeder uh, began working on the movie Barfly, he had no idea that it would be such a struggle during the seven years it took him to complete Barfly. He turned his camera on its screenwriter, poet, and novelist Charles Bukowski, leading to the four-hour study of the man and the music of his words. That is impressive. So I haven't watched the documentary yet, but I'm really excited about checking it out. Uh, there is the case for Barfly. All the included features. And here it is, man. What's the tagline at the top? It says, legendary for his drunken excess and frank observations on life, love, and survival. The Charles Bukowski tapes. I can't wait. I really can't wait. Has anyone seen that before? Is this an, It's a 1985 documentary, so it's been around. Um, those who were, you know, a little bit older than me might have experienced it before. The Road Home. Um... Again, another one that's just not even been on my radar, so I'm interested in discovering this one. It has no special features, but um, there's a real need for movies like this on disc with this kind of treatment, high quality presentations. All right, a few more imprint titles, and then we're going to transition over to via vision releases uh nick nolte shack blue chips this is a fun one i haven't seen this one in a long time so i'm interested in revisiting it um sort of a um uh it's freaking i forgot it was william Freakin. the opinionated man himself william Freakin. from <laughs> does want to wax about about william Freakin. I really want to just talk about good times with Sonny and Cher. Like, hey, did you know that the guy who did The Exorcist and The French Connection also did the Sonny and Cher movie and he still loves it? Like, he's proud of it and he loves those, they love Sonny and Cher. Um, so this is about, obviously, it's about basketball. It's about the business side of things. Maybe, like, kind of a money ball for basketball. Here is the Blu-ray case. Oh, hold that up. This one, I was honestly amazed to see this was getting a Blu-ray. This is Lolita with Jeremy Irons. Uh, it's Jeremy Irons, Melanie Griffith, Frank Langella. They don't even put Dominique Swain on the cover, even though arguably she's the biggest star of the movie. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it takes guts to release this movie. It took, when did this come out? 97. It took guts in 97. It takes more guts in 2022 to put this out on Blu-ray in our current climate. Um... I'm gonna. I'm probably not even gonna get super into this. Uh, this, do you guys remember the police song? Uh, Don't stand so close to me. Like that's Lolita, young teacher, the sub. So uh, that's pretty. It's like you know, it's it's underage attraction and like Jeremy Irons marries this woman to get to the daughter. It's super controversial. It's all super super controversial. But it's brave, man. It's like it's it's just brave for Jeremy Irons. Like coming off of the success of like. <laughs> 
all it's like this is after Die Hard 3 this is way after The Lion King um he makes this I, I don't know it's tons of stuff here too so multiple audio commentaries uh, an exhausting film it's an interview with a cinematographer uh, a video essay by Cat Ellinger casting sessions uh, with Jeremy Irons and Dominique Swain that's cool uh, the casting session on the set did I show you the inside no And another controversial release, Harem, with Natasha Kinski and Ben Kingsley. Uh, what, not even sure what I should say about this either. So I'm just going to flip it around. You can read about it. And um, let's see. Lost Girl, the 70s and 80s cinema of Natasha Kinski. Kinski. That's cool. From Cat Ellinger. The German teaser trailer, audio commentary. All right, that is it for our imprint releases, but we've got more cool stuff to talk about. Uh, how about Ken Burns' country music on Blu-ray for Australia? Now, in the U.S., we've had this on Blu-ray for a while, but it has now come to disc for Australia. And if you're watching this in Australia and you've never seen this, just get it. Just blind buy this. It's an amazing... Anything by Ken Burns <clears throat> becomes the de facto document for what... Ken Burns jazz, Ken Burns baseball... Uh, came, I watched these as they were coming out there. It's, uh, is it eight chapters? Yeah. Eight Ken Burns eight part 16 hour documentary series chronicles the history of a uniquely American art form, uh, including Garth Brooks, Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, Charlie Pride, Hank Williams, Jr. Merle Haggard, Amy Lou Harris, Dwight Yoakam. It is wonderful. And so many of the people that are interviewed here are no longer with us. Uh, and it is exhaustive because it's Kim. We're talking, Brie and I were talking about this when this showed up because she, uh, we both like Kim Burns, but you got to know what you're getting yourself into because it is like, it's not a casual watch. You got to pay attention and it is going to cover so much ground. 16 hours. Um, but it's great stuff. All the special features that were included on the US release, there's, you know, deleted scenes and um, little bits and bobs here and there. I believe everything's been carried over here for the Australian release. And uh, again, if you didn't see or hear the first time, if you were ordering at the drive through window when I was saying this, uh, everything that we're talking about here played on my Region A locked player, including things that are marked as Region B. Uh, that includes Paul McCartney's Get Back, which I'm so excited about. Great timed release with the Beatles get back right because the beat that was the you know the the Peter Jackson this is not Heath on the Beatles get back love the documentary can't stand what Peter Jackson did to the 16 millimeter footage um but it's a great time to tie in Paul McCartney's get back which is a documentary about his 1989 tour he hadn't toured since the seven, I think it was 79, maybe it was the one, is, does it even, after 13 years producing studio albums, ex-Beatle Paul McCartney made a remarkable return to the road in 1980 to 1990 with his Get Back World Tour. He'd been off the road for over a decade, which I didn't realize. Um, and then he took, he toured, toured a little bit, I think through 93, and then he took like another nine years off of touring again. Since then, he's been pretty much on the road regularly, keeping his chops sharp. But uh, great stuff. This is the return of the king, and to, to borrow P another Peter Jackson thing. Songs include Band on the Run, Got to Get You in My End of My Life. Uh, it's, you know, tons of stuff here from both the Beatles, Wings, and Solo. Uh, I'll hold it up. You can freeze it. if you can. It's not it's very small. Let me get a little bit closer. And this is a slipcase, right? So clean artwork. And then inside, we have the uh, the ratings logo. So I appreciate that we have a slip cover for this. Excellent stuff. Could not be happier with it. Uh, because it's horror movie season, the Ginger Snaps trilogy. So this is all three, the first, the three Ginger Snaps movies in one box. Um, I know one of these has a U.S. release from Scream Factory, I want to say. This is three movies. Uh, they all have special features. Hold it up and let you freeze it if you so desire but i'm going to read uh deleted scenes cast auditions and rehearsals uh featurettes making a feature lots of featurettes that's for the first one uh, audio commentary on the second one 
behind the scenes, the deleted scenes, screen tests. Uh, third movie has audio commentary, tons of stuff. That's, they're fairly loaded. And each movie is on its own disc as well. So if you are a fan of Ginger Snaps, and especially if you're in Australia, then now you have all three in one box. Uh, this is a big deal. This is the Mosquito Coast Season 1. This is an Apple TV streaming series in the U.S., I do not know what the international status of the Mosquito Coast is outside of the U.S. I just know it's on Apple TV here. But this is the only disc release, I believe, in the entire world. It is DVD. It's not Blu-ray. Uh, presumably, the show was shot in 4K, so it does look like a DVD. I, you know, I, I popped it in. Again, this, this is the third time. Perfectly fine in my region. So it's region four because it's a DVD, right? The played in my region A locked player. Uh, without any problems. So um, it's cool to see this is something we talk about a lot, right? Is people say, I will not stream. <laughs> it's that line they draw in the sand. I will not stream. No, sir, I will not stream. But I'll buy it on disc. And so here's an opportunity for somebody that wants the Mosquito Coast, which is a series about, you know, there's the movie, the Harrison Ford movie. Uh, but there's also the series because it's all based on a book. And it's about a guy who kind of goes on the run with his family outrunning the government. It's essentially what he's doing. That's timely too, I suppose, which is why they made an Apple TV series about it. So 2021, I'm not sure if it's getting picked back up for more or not, but this is a seven episode series on two DVDs and there are no features here, but hey, you're not beholden to a streaming service to watch the series. So that's our August and September imprints and Via Vision Spotlight. We'll be back here soon. Uh, probably before the end of October, talking about even more imprints and uh, ViaVision releases. But uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Please give us a thumbs up for it. Please subscribe so that others that support the channel, uh, you know, what is this, the phrase, a rising tide lifts all ships. If you can, if, if you support this and you give it a thumbs up and you subscribe, then it helps the algorithm be like, oh, this is getting traction. And then they share it with more people and then, and then they tell a friend and then they tell a friend and it's the domino effect. So that would really help. Uh, also, thanks to Imprint and ViaVision for sending this stuff over for me to show you. I love that we have complete Imprint coverage all the way back to the first, all the way, first Imprint title all the way up to what's going on right now. So it's a, it was a real honor to be one of the only YouTube channels that have complete coverage of Imprint. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about the movies. We've talked about what's coming out. Now let's talk about the movies themselves in the comments below. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. Until next time, I'll catch you later.